Turn the machines on. No title. Take one. Here we go. Well, CO 62291. Number two. Take wait one. Wait one minute. Hello VC, I'm doing a special video today for Mr. Robert Z, whom we all love. I had a wonderful phone conversation with him about several things, and uh, we just uh, delved into the jazz topic a little bit, and Robert Z is known for being a classic rock and progressive rock fan, and he was asking me some questions about jazz. And I thought I would do this video for him. And this is a jazz primer or a hook for the classic rock guy that isn't too familiar with jazz. So this video might be a little bit redundant for some of the ones that I've done in the past. And you know, this video has been done by several people. Dr. Deadwax did one a couple years back on his top three jazz albums for folks who just have not delved into the jazz uh, genre. Jazz is very interesting. I mean, it's huge. It's like rock. I mean, rock has all these subgenres, as does jazz. Unfortunately, jazz does, does not get the play that rock does, and rock is one of the things that actually took jazz, jazz music down. Anyway, for me, jazz has been a breath of fresh air. I was aware of jazz music for the longest time. I was a casual fan. You know, I liked Louis Armstrong. I liked Duke Ellington. I was aware of some pieces, but I never chose to delve into it. And I'm going to show five albums in this video. And for me, these five albums, well, maybe not my favorite all the time. I love them. Um, some of these are Desert island nests for me, and others are, you know, I think, good entry points into the subject of jazz. Now, for me, when I'm getting into a new art form, I think it's particularly valuable to have some historical context behind it. And I'm going to have some links down below to some videos. And uh, one in particular, um, I really recommend... So three of the albums uh, I'm going to show are featured in this video. It's a BBC documentary about one of the most important years in jazz music, which is 1959. Some of the albums I'm going to show are not a surprise to the folks that are into jazz at all. Um, some folks might disagree with me. If you disagree with me and you have other suggestions on you know, what a classic rock fan that has never been exposed to jazz should listen to, shoot me a comment. I'd like to hear what you would recommend. Or make a video. It'd be great. Anyway, in jazz, there are so many reasons why I recommend you check it out. So, number one is the recording. So, jazz music is just wonderfully recorded. Now, my particular area of focus right now is between the uh, years 1950 and 1970. It is the years of hard bop. It was also when free jazz started to take off, and I'm not a big fan of free jazz, I'm just going to say that up front, so that's a subgenre. It's when modal jazz started to take precedence, and you know, there's so much out there within that 20 year time frame. Now, there's stuff before, there's stuff afterwards. Uh, you got some wonderful fusion stuff, you got some wonderful swing stuff, West Coast on the, the other end of this 20 year spectrum, but for me, this is where I am focusing right now and what I really, really enjoy. And what I really, really enjoy is hard bop stuff, which is kind of a derivative of bebop, where you have um, less focus on the solos. Yes, there's a lot of soloing in hard bop, but it's slowed down a little bit from bebop. And you know, you got different people doing solos, and you got a kind of a start and a finish that the whole band is playing together, and I, I find it very interesting. Number two, um, you got interchangeable players. Unlike rock, where you got one band that does album year after year, or in this case, with a lot of bands, it's like 
every four years let's release something. With that, jazz, no. It's like a lot of these guys, every three months or every six months, they were cutting a record. And, you know, the players, for the most part, would change from band to band. I mean, Miles Davis, who was very big, I mean, he had different quintets and he had different periods. And a lot of these guys were progressing as the years went by. And so they weren't stuck in the same thing over and over again. So that makes it very interesting. Um, it's very collectible. Robert Z, I know you're a collector, so jazz, because, you know, rock kind of cut it down. The pressings, at least on the vinyl side, there's not that many. So it made it very collectible, and even today, with the boutique pressings that you get, there's not that many, because it just does not sell well as rock. But, in terms of dollar value, if you're an investor, and I'm not, I go for the music, but if you're an investor, yeah, it, it shoots up high, like original pressings. Yeah, some people are paying like five figures for an original pressing, so I don't get it. And, you know, the packaging is nice, so I really recommend trying it. So check out the videos down below. You get some context behind, you know, what's going behind these albums. And for me, when you have a historical context, you know, it makes you appreciate things that much more. But, so, no further, let me get into the albums. So, first one, um, and this is in no particular order, I just happened to grab this one, and chronologically, this would be the first one, and this is Blue Train by John Coltrane. So this is the Analog uh, Productions 45 RPM edition. This has been issued numerous times, so, whether you listen to it on Spotify or you get a cheap CD, and I recommend, you know, just go with it cheap. Make sure you like it before you get into it. This is one to grab. Um, this is John Coltrane's second album as a leader. Um, it featured a wonderful lineup, uh, including Lee Morgan, which is my favorite uh, trumpeter. And, you know, with Blue Note, you had nice pictures, and the liner notes are so critical in jazz music. I mean, they talk about each song and the thought process behind each song, and it talks about um, the players on the session. This just happened to come out in 1957. Um, this is when John Coltrane was trying to get off drugs. He was on heroin. He was also in My Miles Davis's band at the time, and that's going to be another record I'm going to show you at the end. And, you know, Miles Davis's uh, quintet took a break. And during that break, John Coltrane started to issue some of his first solo records. This just happens to be the only one he did on Blue Note. Uh, he did one with Prestige before this, but this one is just a milestone album for Miles Davis. And to me, it's probably his most accessible in the beginning. He has a lot of other milestones, like a Love Supreme. He did a lot of great stuff with Atlantic and Impulse that are worth checking out. But this is probably a good entry point uh, for John Coltrane's music. Next up is one of the albums that's featured in uh, the BBC documentary, which I have linked down below, and this is Time Out by Dave Brubeck. And the year that the BBC documentary references is 1959. So this is West Coast jazz with a little bit of hard bop tinge to it. This just happens to be the analog uh, productions issue, which has some nice photos on the interior of the particular session. And again, you got the wonderful line at the liner notes, and you got the wonderful album art. Um, the big thing for collectors is to get the, the original Columbia Six Eye. I mean, I've never seen an original original of this in the stores. Um, I've come across some '70s reissues, and when Analog issued this, I just jumped on it because it just sounds spectacular. I mean, this is one of those ones that was re so well recorded that the band feels like they're in the room with you. And even if you have a mediocre system, it just sounds phenomenal. And this is really known for the song "Take Five." And sample this. I'll include a link to that one down below. And I swear, when you hear it, you're going to recognize it. And you know, this is just wonderful. The next album I'm going to show you is by Charles Mingus. Now, it's not my most favorite Mingus album. I love Mingus. He is a wonderful composer, very colorful person. <laughs> um, yeah, he had a personality behind him, and 
Uh, he's really tough to get along with, at least for you know what I've heard about his band members. But this is the ORG uh, reproduction of this. Um, this uh, happened to have some wonderful songs on it. Uh, Fables of Phobos, which was controversial. Uh, it's in reference to the Arkansas government, uh, uh, Arkansas governor at the time. And Columbia, I think, uh, issued this uh, in an edited fashion because it was really a knock against the uh, Arkansas governor, uh, who uh, is very famous in terms of not letting black folks into, I want to say, university at the time, um, and was very into keeping things segregated. And so uh, this is Mingus, uh, Charles Mingus, rallying against that. And it also has Goodbye Perk My Hat, which is. Uh, tribute to Lester Young, famous saxophonist who, you know, has quite the influence on the English language today and was quite the personality himself. So if it wasn't for Lester Young, we would not have the word cool or use the word cool uh, in the way that we do today. And another Lester Youngism is bread for money. So Lester Young has weaved his way into pop culture in the English language in ways that we are still uh, trying to comprehend today. So um, I have a few Lester Young uh, records and he has some wonderful stories I go behind him so hopefully when I pull those out and uh, show them in a video I'll have some more anecdotes on Lester Young but this is just a great album. So again, Mingus Ahun, again 1959 that's on the BBC documentary so definitely check this out. Now. The next album I'm going to show was my hook into jazz. I discovered this in a Tokyo Tower Records in 2009. This is probably the biggest Tower Records uh, in all of Tokyo. Seven stories maybe, and each story was dedicated to a particular genre. I walked into the seventh story, which is their jazz story, and it was just mind-blowing. And they had this album playing in the background. I didn't even know who Art Blaker was, and I didn't know who the Jazz Messengers were. And I heard the title track, Monin, and I'm going to include a link to that down below. If this doesn't hook you, I don't know what will, because Monin is just incredible. Um, this is Art Blakey at a time in the Jazz Messengers where Lee Morgan, who I referenced in the first album, John Col Coltrane's Blue Train, came with Benny Golson, another famous saxophonist that was featured in uh, Steven, Spiel's, uh, Steven Spielberg movie um, where you know Tom Hanks character uh, which came from a foreign country was after Benny Golson's signature so you know this has this its hook into uh, the movie just by virtue of Benny Golson so uh, definitely worth checking out again this was a Blue Note issue um, analog Productions Limited, but uh, again, I think uh, Blue Note 75 did this. You can get it really cheaply, pick it up on CD, listen to it on Spotify or down below. Just see, hey, you know, would this get me into jazz? That was also issued in 59, so 59 was just a great year, but that one didn't come out in the documentary. That's just a personal favorite. Anyway, this one is a desert island disc for me and uh, for a lot of people. Uh, this is definitely key. This is Kind of Blue by Miles Davis. This is my favorite Miles Davis album. Uh, I think we talked on the phone, Robert, that yeah, MoFi is issuing Miles Davis. They're gonna get to this one, but uh, this is the classic records edition and this is the last time the master tape was touched. So this uh, you look at any jazz website and they list their top 10, top 100. This most frequently is going to be the number one album. And this is not the first modal record, but it's what made modal jazz popular. And there's a wonderful documentary associated with this that Sony put out for the 50th anniversary of the album. Um, again, this is probably the best jazz uh, best-selling jazz album of all time and features quite the lineup. 59, John Coltrane was back uh, with Miles Davis and it had uh, Bill Evans. So Bill Evans, if you look at pianist and jazz, he's one of the most influential. It's 
one of the ones that a lot of people seek. Uh, Miles Davis collaborated with uh, Bill Evans on several tracks, and Miles Davis was looking for Bill Evans' sound. Paul Chambers is one of the best bassists of jazz. And then uh, Cannonball Adderley, wonderful altoist, and Jimmy Cobb, Winton Kelly. Jimmy Cobb is the only person that's still living from that actual session, and he is featured in that Sony documentary. So definitely check this out. Now, compilations. How do I feel about compilations? How do people in BC feel about compilations? Well, I guess I should start with their greatest hits. Hey, greatest hits albums are for housewives and little girls. You're not serious. You don't want to be a Doors fan. Get out of my store. I personally don't think compilations are a bad thing. Um, for jazz music, it's what I started out with. It's what got me more into it. So, Ken Burns's jazz series is great. And why is it great? It's because he got licensing, licensing from all the labels. So if you go to Columbia's Best Of, you're only going to get stuff from Columbia. If you go to Verb, you're only going to get Verb. But with Ken Burns, he got Verb, he got Columbia, he got Blue Note, he got Impulse. He got all these jazz labels, and so this is, while it's not perfect for some of these artists, it's great. It's a great way to sample, like, their entire career. So, I can't recommend these enough. And Ken Burns Jazz is another one. Um, I would link it, but you have to pay to watch it. And if you're going to watch it, again, this is what really got me more into it, is learning about some of the history of these guys. So here's Lester Young that I mentioned. Um, I recommend watching the last two episodes. Uh, it, the documentary is really well done. It's in seven or eight parts. The first part starts at the late 1800s and then it goes all the way to modern day. So that's wonderful. So uh, definitely check that out if you get more into it. So those are my five. I hope you enjoy this video. For those of you watching for the first time, hopefully. This was helpful if you're not into jazz music. Uh, if you're into jazz, you disagree with me, have other suggestions, definitely shoot me a comment. Uh, shoot me a link. I'll be happy to add it to the video and, and add your video in it because I'd like to see other people's thoughts on this. So thank you for watching and uh, have a great weekend, everybody.